Welcome to Goldshire on the roleplay server Moonguard. For many of you, myself included, the very mention of this name brings certain images to mind. Naked night elves dancing on the tables, worgen druids yiffing in the attic, those weird horde players who always hang out in the back room upstairs. Many of you may also have disturbing stories from roleplay realms. The first video on this channel was catfishing a 25 year old man who thought he was sexting a 16 year old girl, but that's a tale for another time. The truth is, roleplaying realms have a dark history dating all the way back to 2007. What if I told you that an entire guild full of potential predators operated in the game back then? What if I told you that it was so bad that Blizzard disbanded the guild and then intentionally covered it up to avoid bad press during WoW's rise to fame? I can't find any other instance of Blizzard publicly disbanding a guild, so there had to be a pressing reason to do so. Nobody else online has talked about this, so it seems to be one of WoW's oldest and darkest secrets. Let me tell you about Abhorrent Taboo. The year is 2007. Crank That Soldier Boy just dropped. Rickrolling was about to become the funniest thing on the internet. And two girls, one cup. Let's not get too deep into that. Within the infancy of modern internet culture, World of Warcraft's first expansion, The Burning Crusade, had just been released. People were excited, to say the least. Lines formed outside of stores so that people could get their copy day one and roll blood elves and whatever these things are. This was revolutionary and radical. Suddenly, the Horde could be paladins and the Alliance could be shamans? Amongst all of this chaos, a guild had formed on Ravenholt US, a role-playing server. This guild's name was Abhorrent Taboo, and it was led by a guild master called Lilith. Lilith and her guild never hid the fact that they were erotic role-players. In fact, they were quite open about this. The following is a transcription of their recruitment policy from the original World of Warcraft forums. The original post has been lost to time, but we can source this from a WoW Insider article through the Wayback Machine. The message reads as follows. Note, be advised that we frequently ERP in guild chat and often engage in even potential potentially offensive kinks such as extreme age play, bestiality, childbirth, water sports, or any other kink those playing may wish to explore. If you are easily offended or upset by others using kinks you may not personally enjoy, this is not the guild for you. Furthermore, we are a guild based on freedom of love and sex. Monogamy of any kind runs counter to this, and so all sexually exclusive relationships are prohibited. Some people might find all of these things gross or offensive. Personally, I think what two consenting adults do in the privacy of their own messages is nobody's business. The key phrase here is consenting adults. What raises suspicion is the part mentioning age play, a form of roleplay where one or more participants pretend to be an age different than what they are. For all we know, they could be roleplaying as 80 year old, but I have a hunch that that's not the case. According to the same article, players from the forums described the guild's efforts of age verification to be lax. So, a guild openly promoting erotic age play that allegedly does not verify the age of its members. This information alone is not necessarily damning. All it shows is that the members of this guild may accidentally engage in cyber sex with a minor. Would you be surprised if I told you that it gets worse? The following was the welcome message for Abhorrent Taboo's branch on the Blackwater Raiders server. Role-playing is legal, even if you are role-playing something that would be considered deplorable and highly illegal in real life, it's still just role-playing, and isn't subject to any form of disciplinary action. Negative publicity is still publicity. Make a dig or website about how sick we are. Report us to perverted justice. All it does is bring in more members. In fact, the dig the guy on Ravenholt made about us was so effective, several people signed up for WoW just to be in our guild. The bottom line is, we're allowed to do what we do on any server we please, and no one can do anything about it. This is a response to a supposed dig article made to expose the guild and its members. The original article, again, is now defunct, but there is one very interesting shred of evidence surviving from it. Apparently, the writer of the article was able to infiltrate the guild and get screenshots of the guild chat. See, what pissed me off is I can't decide who to defend when people call us pedophiles. Do elaborate. Just say we are not, then leave the forums. I want to defend us, but I also want to defend the pedosexual community. I put on my robe and wizard hat and cast level 3 eroticism. The term used in this screenshot 
pedosexuals is a term used by pedophiles to normalize their attraction to minors. They claim that a pedosexual is anyone who has an attraction to minors but does not act upon those attractions. Recently, this has also taken the form of MAPS, or Minor Attracted Persons. Similarly, it is an attempt to normalize pedophilia. They have even tried to piggyback their way into the LGBTQ plus umbrella in order to be normalized and accepted. This is of course ludicrous and ends up hurting the image of the LGBTQ plus community. It got so bad that the LGBT Foundation had to make a public statement that it in no way considered pedophiles part of the LGBTQ plus community, even under the label of non-offending pedosexuals. So then, what do we know now about Abhorrent Taboo and their guildmaster Lilith? They are completely open about their extreme erotic age play. Their age verification is allegedly lax. The guildmaster, Lilith, is a defender of pedosexuals. After being exposed, they then claim, we are allowed to do what we want on any realm whenever we want, and nobody can do anything about it. Again, all of these points don't necessarily make a pedophile-shaped line, but it's pretty suspicious that if you just so happen to draw a line through all of these points, you do in fact get a very detailed picture of Jeffrey Epstein and Jared Fogle holding hands. I mentioned earlier that Blizzard did, in fact, take action. They forcibly disbanded the guild and silenced further discussion on the forums. The following is Blizzard's official public statement according to the forum moderator Verith. This matter is not one Blizzard takes lightly in any way, shape, or form, and we do not wish to have this topic continue circulation. Let it finally be said that we appreciate those of you who brought this particular issue to our attention and that we will continue to follow up with this matter in the future to ensure the safety of all parties concerned. This worked! because I can't find anything about Habquarant Taboo on the forums, and most people that I ask about it have no idea what I'm talking about. This seems suspicious to me. Blizzard disbanded the guild, but didn't ban anybody? If nothing ban-worthy happened, then why silence discussion of the matter? I can't find any other instance of an erotic roleplay guild being disbanded by Blizzard, so this means that what was happening was bad enough for Blizzard to step in. They do have access to every single public and private chat log. I can only assume, based on the information that we have, that there was at least child grooming going on. Blizzard may have sent information to the authorities. The silencing of this discussion may have been in order to avoid disrupting the investigation into Lilith and her group of pedosexuals. Wait, if it was this bad, why not just ban them? Because WoW was in the middle of its explosion into mainstream popular culture. I don't think there was ever an investigation. It was entirely an attempt to brush it under the rug. In 2007, To Catch a Predator was immensely popular, so a case of child predators in the most popular online video game ever would be almost certain to blow up. Blizzard didn't want their brand to be associated with child predators. It's that simple. Blizzard covered up a controversy to benefit their image. So, what happened to Lilith and her guild? Well, the very next day, Abhorrent Taboo reformed under the name Vile Anathema. It didn't last very long. Thanks to Blizzard's efforts of silencing the discussion, they faded into history. I did find a copycat guild on Moonguard, but the Lilith leading this guild hasn't played since Legion. I scoured saucy online forums and asked players on almost all role-playing realms about the situation. Nobody knows what happened to Lilith and her guild. They seem to disappear from WoW entirely. I said they seem to disappear from WoW. Somebody on the Wormrest Accord Discord server mentioned to me that they played with Lilith on Final Fantasy XIV of all places. Would it surprise you that apparently Lilith played a Lollafell and was extremely public with her erotic roleplay? That's where the story stops, because at this point, if we go any further, we would be bordering on harassment, even if this is a potential predator. I will privately continue to look into this matter, and if I find any important information, I will forward it to the proper authorities. Please do not go around to every single Lollafell a fellow named Lilith and accused them of being a predator. Lilith is a very common name, especially on roleplay servers. If anything else wacky or zany happens, I'll make sure to make an update video. If you like this style of video, make sure to click like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling me what you thought. If you didn't like it, make sure to at me on Twitter and call my mother a dirty whore. If you want to form an uncomfortable parasocial relationship with me and my community, make sure to join us on Twitch, where we do viewer raids, Mythic Plus, and more. Thank you.